Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, I received a request from someone asking me if I could demonstrate how to create a passport photo in Lightroom. That's what I'm going to be doing in this video. Passport photo requirements vary slightly from country to country. I'm going to demonstrate how to create a passport photo using US government guidelines. If you live in a different country, I strongly recommend that you Google the requirements for your country so that you're sure you're creating a passport photo that meets those requirements. Now with that said, what I'm going to demonstrate in this video still should help you create your passport photo. Now, there's some basic requirements. First of all, it must be a color photo. Second, your subject should be in front of a white or off-white background. Third, they should be looking directly at the camera uh, and they should not be smiling. There, t there should be, their head should be level. They shouldn't be looking up, down, left, right. They shouldn't be wearing any headgear unless it's for religious reasons. And um, finally, uh, the lighting should be flat. There should be no shadows on their face. Now, this image fails in that last regard, although it isn't that bad. Um, typically, what you want to do is use an umbrella when you take the image. Have the umbrella right at the camera, but high. And the reason why you want to use a re an umbrella, not a shoot-through umbrella either, a reflective umbrella, is because it just spews light everywhere and it will soften any shadows. And if you have it directly at the camera and high, any shadows cast on the background will be cast down low and they won't be in the shot. Also, it should be a head and shoulders shot like this is. Now, once you have the image and you load it in Lightroom, you could do some retouching on it, but you shouldn't do any retouching that dramatically alters the way they look, meaning if they have scars on their face or their shoulders or their neck or whatever, or they have any moles, do not remove those. Those are permanent. You can remove a blemish, a pimple, uh, flyaway hair, stuff like that. Feel free to retouch that. Then when you actually go to, let's say, the basic tab and you do some retouching, don't like open shadows up so much that their hair doesn't look like the color it actually is. So they really have to look like them. You could remove those transient things, though, like pimples and flyaway hair. Now, once you have it retouched, the next step is to crop it uh, as your government requires. U.S. government, actually most countries, it's a square image. So go to the crop tool, go right here uh, where it says original, and then just go to one-to-one. -one. All right, now you cropped it. Now close down the crop tool. Oh, no, wait. Um, one other requirement is, at least as far as the U.S. government is concerned, is that the person should take up at least 75% of the frame. Now, it's kind of hard to like do, you know, is he taking up 75% of the frame or at least 75% of the frame? Well, you could just tighten it up. You know, you're better off being, um, you know, the image being tighter than it is looser. So tighten it up, make sure they're right in the middle, and then you're all set. Now, if you live in the United States, there is, um, the United States has a web tool that will let you know if your image passes muster. I'll have it linked in the description below this video. And what you could do is you could upload your image to it and you could see basic examples. It's showing that these are good images, right? If you go to size and position, uh, you could see that this is a perfectly positioned image. He is too close to the image. She's off to the side. She's too far away. Pose and expression. Straight, no smile. His head's tilted down. He's smiling a little. He's smiling. His head's up. So these three don't pass. Glasses, that's important. They should not be wearing their glasses. So make sure they're off uh, because when you're traveling, um, the person looking at your passport could always ask you to take off your glasses. Um, so that should be off. Again, uh, for religious purposes, you could have some headwear. 
um, but it shouldn't be covering your face. And you can see how these uh, don't work. His hair is covering his face. I think that's what's wrong with that one. Uh, shadows and lighting should be flat lighting, and it shouldn't be overexposed or underexposed or have dramatic shadows. That's where mine might be an issue. Uh, background should be white or off-white, plain, no plants, no maps behind it. Um, resolution and quality, so relatively high resolution. You can see how this is a blurry photo here, so it's got to be sharp. Uh, children uh, should be similar as done to a, an adult, you know, and they're got a little more leeway if their head isn't tilted or looking straight at the camera, but they can't be sitting on a parent's lap or in a chair. And face obstruction, uh, this again is, you know, no, nothing in front of your face, basically hair like that, or looking away or having a pacifier. All right, now we're going to see if my image passes muster. So we're going to export it from um, Lightroom. So we'll go to export. So what you want to do is you could export it at a fairly large resolution um, and size to begin with, just to make sure because this website's going to fix it for you. So you, if you're too small, it won't meet the resolution requirements. And if it's um, too big, it, it, they'll, they'll shrink it down on the website. So what I would do here is I'll, I'll just put like 2,000 pixels. And since it's square, that is going to be um, the width and the height. I could put it in though too, if I'm doing it this way. Oops, not 200, 2,000. All right, do a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. Um, your copyright only, maybe you want to export it as, and then don't do anything. We're going to export it to the desktop, and I'm just going to call it PP for Passport, okay? And make sure quality is at 100. That's important. sRGB color space, JPEG, all right? So we got those requirements. I'll just do it again because I kind of did it in piecemeal. First of all, JPEG sRGB quality at 100. Uh, make sure your width and height, I would say 2,000 uh, width, 2,000 height. You could use Excel, uh, inches or centimeters if you prefer, but just make sure it's a square image and we're going to export it to the desktop. Now once it exports, we'll upload it here and see if it, it does. And it, it, it's accepted, so this image works. And you can see how it did an automatic crop and cropped it even more. So I could accept and proceed and then uh, download the image to my device. Now I could download this um, as it is and it will be the correct size now that I could include with my passport application. So the United States government makes it relatively easy to make sure that your image passes muster. Even with the shadows on the side of his face, the website said it was okay. But just to be careful, if you're a photographer taking the image, just use, as I suggested, the umbrella um, at camera high so you really soften all those shadows. This image I took several years ago and I wasn't taking it for a passport. I was making sure that I had an absolute white background. I was just setting up my lights for a photo shoot and my son was my assistant. He just stepped into the image so that I could make sure my light ratios were correct before the model got there. So that's why I took this image. I didn't take it for a passport photo. Now, if you don't live in the U.S., just make sure that you crop it to the correct size. Then what you could do is you could use the print module of Lightroom to print it to the requirements needed by your government. So go to the print module. And what you want to do, there really isn't a template for the U.S. government, at least. Uh, you need a two-inch image for the U.S. government, like a two-by-two -two cell. That's not a two-inch. No, that's two... Uh, rows and two columns. That's what that means. So just pick four by six. That will get you started. So you have a four by six image right in the middle of the frame. Then what you do is go over here under layout and change this to the actual size requirements. Um, in the U.S. government, as I mentioned, it's two inches by two inches. So change that to two inches by two inches and you can see it did it right there. But obviously if you're living in the U.S. though, you're going to use this website. And again, I'll have this linked in the description below this video. As far as the government where you live, make sure what the requirements are, put it in there, and then print it to file. Now we'll go down here, um, film um, file resolution, 300 pixels, 
print sharpening, I wouldn't use anything above standard. I would even keep it at low. Make sure that you're printing it to the correct media type. Um, your government may require a matte print. It may require a glossy print. So make sure you look that up. Then again, it may not matter. Um, JPEG quality, make sure it's at 100. And then go down and just, oops, we don't want to print a file. We want to print to printer. Same settings though, as I mentioned, 300 low. And then make sure you're using the correct either glossy or matte. And 16-bit output's fine. Let your printer manage it and then print it. And it will print this image to your printer. And then you're going to have to cut it. Um, you know, to the correct size. So hopefully that helps everyone, not only the people in the United States create a passport photo, but anyone throughout the um, country create a passport photo uh, that works, um, you know, that meets the requirements of your country. So again, you just Google it. Uh, that's how I found this website. I Googled uh, passport requirements for you, passport photo requirements for U.S. government. That's how I found this. So again, I'll have this linked in the description below that video, hopefully it helps you. And hopefully this entire video helps you create a passport photo that works in your country. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.